I want to finish up with the pumping lemma. We talked about it last time. And the way we're thinking about the pumping lemma is that this is dialogue between me and somebody who thinks they have a grammar for, for a particular language. And if they think they do, then I ask them how many non-terminals in the Chomsky normal form of their grammar, and they tell me. And then I raise that to the power of two, more or less, and, and I pick strings longer than that, where I can convince them, guaranteed, that my string in the parse tree that they have to come up with has to have a duplicate non-terminal starting from the bottom moving to the top. And then there's got to be these duplications. So let's do an example of this. We did this last time at the end. We'll do it quickly again. Let's say we're wondering about the language 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 2 to the n over the alphabet 0, 1, and 2. And I want to show you that this is not context-free. So you go home and try to come up with a grammar for it, and you give me uh, the number of non-terminals in your Chomsky normal form grammar. And then uh, I have to come up with a string longer than that, which is in this language. So let's say you tell me that your grammar's got you know, uh, five uh, non-terminals. I raise that to the power of 2. I get 32. And I use strings longer than that, and it's fine. So say I'll use 0 to the 32, 1 to the 32, 2 to the 32. And in general, this number is completely general. I mean, I'd have to call this M or P or something. But, but you pick the number. I pick the string. Here's my string. Now I give it back to you. And I'm asking you to do the parse tree and tell me things about the parse tree. In particular, the parse tree will divide up this string into five parts. The U, V, W, X, and Y. The U and Y represent parts of the tree that are off on the side, outside of the duplication. The V, W, and X represent the piece that comes under the subtree at the top non-terminal of the duplication. And the W part is the part that's derived from the bottom non-terminal of the duplication. So when I substitute the bottom part for the top part and make the parse tree bigger, I get another string that's just like this, except the v's and the x's are double. And I can do that again, and then the v's and the x's would be triple. So the opponent, or you guys, split the string up into five pieces. And since I'm forcing you to do it in a particular way, I can guarantee that the middle piece has to be smaller than the n, or the 32. So you get to tell me anything you want about how this parse tree looks, but whatever you tell me, you have to abide by those uh, conditions, and then I have to consider all the possibilities of where this middle section that you're going to give me might be, because you could give me anything. So let's say you told me that the VWX section was all in the zeros, then I'd have to decide what to do. If you tell me the VWX section overlaps the zeros and the ones, I'd have to decide what to do. If it's all in the ones, if it overlaps the ones and twos, or if it's all in the twos. Five cases. And each case, I would explain why I can still pump out the V and the X and get something that is not in this language. And when I do that, I win. So I'll do that for all the five cases. For the case when the VWX is all in the zeros, I pump out the V and X once, and I get extra zeros. So this th 0 to the 32 becomes bigger. And these stay the same, and that's not in the language. In the case where it overlaps on the zeros and the ones, there there's a couple possibilities. If either the V or X actually contains both zeros and ones, say v was 0, 1, then when I duplicate that, I get 0, 1, 0, 1, and that's not even close to this format. If the v's contain just zeros and the x's contain just ones, then those might get pumped up equally, but they would mismatch the twos. And I can do this for every single case of all the five cases. I can pick i equals 2 for my pumping. I just pump it up one extra time, that means, and I always win. And therefore, this language is not context-free because it does not satisfy the pumping property that every context-free language is supposed to satisfy. OK, that was review and intro. Questions about that? Let's do another one. And this time, you guys are going to be involved. So here's the another famous uh, language which is not context-free, WW. The complement of this happens to be context-free. You do that on the assignment that you're working on now. And we talked about it in class. But WW itself is not context-free. That's the set of all strings that are the first half are the same as the second half. All right, so I claim it's not context-free. You claim it is context-free. You go home, you come up with a, uh, with a grammar. You tell me how many non-terminals are in it. I raise it to the power of 2. And I come up with a string to, uh, to try to um, make my point. So here's the string I'll start with. I'm going to come up with some bad strings. 
I have to come up with one string that works. If I come up with one string that works that I can win the, the dialogue, then I win. But if I pick a wrong string, you guys will be able to win the dialogue. It doesn't mean that I have no way to win, it just means I made a bad move at the beginning of the game. Right? This is a game, it's back and forth. There exists a string such that any way you split it up, there exists an eye that I can pump it. So I have to find the right string. If I pick the wrong one, you might be able to win. I'm going to pick the wrong one now. So here's an example of something in WW. Uh, say, say your size of your grammar, again, is, is, four, is five symbols, so 2 to the fifth, 32. I just have to pick something bigger than 32, say. Or maybe we should just call the size of your uh, grammar uh, k, and 2 to the k is, is the length I have to beat. Whatever, and we'll call p equals 2 to the k. So here, p equals 2 to the number of non-terminals that you give me in your Chomsky normal form grammar. That way, it's not a particular number. P equals 2 to the number of non-terminals in the Chomsky normal form. So I'm going to pick 0 to the P, 0 to the P. That's definitely of the form WW. It's definitely longer than, than P symbols. It's twice P symbols. And it's supposed to have this, this sequence of five parts that it can be split into. And I have to see if I can pump that up and show you something that's not WW. So now it's your turn to split this into five parts. Pick a good split that kills me. What do you want to let VWX equal? OK, so why don't we have, um, we'll have u equals 0, y equals 0, w equals 0. So we've got you know, just single zeros there. You should realize w can be empty. u can be empty, and y can be empty. The only thing that can't be empty in this string is vx together. One of them has to actually exist. Or two zeros. Yeah, OK. So let's make it two zeros. And now v is going to be, and x is going to be what? We got two p's here. We got four there. Let's add up all these zeros, make sure they work out. p minus two, p minus two, that's two p minus four. Plus those four, it's two p altogether. Why are we doing this? Why are you doing this? Why is Chris doing this? Because now the V and X are the same. And now whatever I try to do to pump them up, the resulting language has the same number of zeros in the first half as it does in the second half. And you guys win. In fact, you can say, I split it like this and convince me that whatever I, I choose now, I'm going to lose. Because pumping these up equally makes the same number on both halves of the string. So what does that mean? I've got to go back to my drawing board. This string is terrible. I picked the wrong string. I'm never going to show you that this language is not context-free by picking this wrong string. So now let's switch sides. There's no other way to break it. Well, there might be a way that breaks it that helps me, but you don't want to do that. You already picked a way that breaks it that kills me. So, so even if there is another way to do it that's worse, we don't care about that. <laughs> yeah, but that is the truth. Yeah. No, but it, all you have to do is find one way that works. If that's the real way the parse tree looks, then I'm, then I'm just dead. All right, so I've got to pick a better string, so we're going to switch sides. Now you guys are going to play my part, and I'm going to play your part. Pick a better string that makes it harder for me to do the splitting. No more 0 to the P, 0 to P. That didn't work. Try something that won't work, please. Want me to do one more that doesn't work, and then you can finally pick the one that does work? How about this? Is this going to be any better? Um, is that going to be any better? I mean, it's the same kind of string. Uh, it's a WW. Now we stuck some ones in, you know, to make it a little less symmetrical. Where can you split it up to make the V and the X to kill me whatever I try to do? Yeah, you can pick the V to be someplace in this zero area. You can have it be just a single zero here, or any number of zeros, and have the X be the same number of zeros in this area. And then when I pump them up, I'm just getting similar amounts of zeros in this section and this section, and it still looks like zero to the something, one, zero to that 